All right, man, are you ready to street evangelize? I think I'm ready. Bingo, found my target. Leave the keys. You still doing this thing? Leave the keys. You got this, Andrew. Remember, the way of the master. No, you don't! What if you stumble on your words? Trust God. He will give you the words. You walk like a fool! Luke 12.12 12 says the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say at the moment when you need them. Look to God, son. This guy's gonna make fun of you and judge you hard! You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Wait, aren't you taking that passage out of context? As a matter of fact, yeah. Who needs context? Am I right? You're actually terribly wrong. Andrew, you should probably say something before it's too late. You suck! Don't listen to him. You're tripping so much I feel like I'm at SeaWorld! You got this. Get this man a towel! You can do it. Come on. Are you okay? You've been staring at me a long time. Do you, do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And, and then you accept that the blood of Christ has covered all your sins and that you're forgiven and you can go to heaven? Well, I, I already have. I'm a Christian. Oh, great, God. Oh. Let's talk. I think I have a okay. few things to share with you. Okay. You ever heard of Ray Comfort? Uh, no, I haven't. No? Actually. Oh, yeah, you might want to look him up. What does he do? Does he do like the street uh, ministry too? Yeah, a little more effective. Did, did you feel like I came across a little too strong? A little sweaty. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's hot out here. Welcome everybody, happy Monday, yeah, happy, happy Monday. Monday, it's going to be a good time today, and if you're watching on Tuesday, happy Tuesday, if you're watching on Wednesday, happy Wednesday, or Thursday, Friday, whatever, happy day, happy day, oh, happy day. It's Mondays, man, Come I on. know, but some people watch it later. Yeah, but you know what? Those aren't, those people aren't important. <laughs> okay. And we just lost our <laughs> second viewer. <laughs> <laughs> we, we only have four. We, yeah, now we lost our second live viewer. Oh. Um, hope you guys are doing well though. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, we're here today. We have a great episode for us today. I'm very excited. One of my heroes, uh, Ray Comfort, is going to be joining us. But uh, how are you guys doing today? Good. Doing yeah. well. I thought yeah. I was one of your heroes. Well, that's why I say he's one of my heroes. You are one of my heroes. Are you sure? I, I just had me worried. I can there. still barely look at you with this. Nerve <laughs> <pain>. <laughs> oh, the nerve pain. Yes. So you're not doing well. I know uh, you always ask us how we're doing. We never ask yeah. Andrew how he's doing. <laughs> no one cares, man. <laughs> I just realized it's been like 16 <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you, Andrew? Uh, you know what? Terrible. Thanks for asking. Okay, Anyways, Chris, you. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still battling with nerve pain. My pain has gone down ever since Sven um, last week uh, used that massage oh, gun. That's good. Uh, good guy. Um, he's a great guy. But um, yeah, I'm on some like heavy duty drugs and it uh, makes my brain a little foggy. Nice. But, uh, but the pain has gone down a little bit. Great. I'm hoping I can get off the drugs. I'm doing physio, all that kind of stuff. I started that, but uh, but this nice that I can kind of roll my chair and just kind of <laughs> I don't have to actually. Uh, we have a chair on our patio that literally just like it's like a little. It just spins. You're so on we, that 24 seven. So I'm sitting there the other day, and uh, we had community group, and so someone would say something, I just kind of like, <laughs> like Palpatine. Turn. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then another person on the opposite side. <laughs> <laughs> Give me time. Give me time. Speak. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> With a little cat on your lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if not, if I wasn't allergic, yeah. I would have. 
But I'm I want a chair guys. like that. It's actually really helpful, especially if you have nerve pain in your neck and shoulder. Oh. But anyways, I should get, um, ner- I should get nerve pain. No, in my neck and you should not. So <laughs> you do have nerve pain, don't you? Yeah, it's in my scapular. Scapular. Down my yeah. left shoulder. And then this guy over here. I'm, he's it's not just, as bad. It's not as bad as yours, though. Yeah, Sorry. this is this is pretty rough. Chris this, is flawless. Cl- Chris is yeah, flawless. Yeah, let's get back to how I'm yeah. perp- perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Chris, how are you? Perfect, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, you're doing well. well he's not even going to refute the perfect. Uh, <laughs> we're, not ta- we're not talking about sanctification, by the way. We're Life's just, good. I'm totally <laughs> just biologically. <laughs> I'm totally going to get hit by a car. I'm oh, now. come on. No, 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 Why no, would you no, say no, that? No, no, no. How dare you? It's, it's Life's not, good. We haven't gotten to the manifestation episode yet, have we? So we have not. We're good. No, we're good. Yeah, you can't just say <laughs> something. Episode. That's a shout out. In the summer, all. we yeah. are yep. going to be doing a series called Spiritual right. Things. Um, that's happening in, I think, is it, is it July? Is that when we plan so, to yeah. schedule that? Yeah. July. We're going to be talking to some great people. We've got some good episodes lined up. We're going to talk about some stuff that um, uh, is going to make us feel a little uncomfortable. We're going to talk about yoga. That whole thing made me yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about that too. Sound bites. <laughs> uh, great. Demo- demonic sound bites. Um, awesome. No, we're going to talk about uh, y- yoga for that series. We're going to be talking about the Enneagram, which is going to ruffle some feathers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I was just thinking about demonic sound bites. It's like, did you just go to like an exorcism and hit record or something? Okay, that sounds terrible. <laughs> this listen, listen to this recording I got of this exorcism. Can we use yeah. that as a sound bite? No. No, you no. You can't. That's a little too far, Brendan. <laughs> so, a, that was funny. <laughs> if I can turn and look at you right now, I would. And I'd be shaking my head. This is how sorry, I shake my sorry. head. Very serious. <clears throat> this is the best I can do. The way you were just turning Okay, you know what? There you go. <laughs> oh, you should bring your chair to the office. Oh, the, the big chair, I don't know the big patio <laughs> chair. No, yes. it's huge. Take the desk away. It's, it's huge. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's a great series that I look forward to in the summer. I think it's going to be fascinating and very um, uh, just um, educational, I think. Yep. We're going to learn a lot. Uh, so I look forward to that. But today, we are not talking about any of those things. We have Ray Comfort in the house. And by in the house, I mean on Zoom. Um, <laughs> Ray Comfort in the house. He's not actually in the house. He's on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. So he has air a horns. new book. Yeah. Air horns. We got to get some air horns. We sound bites. That would be fantastic for I, Happy Monday. Or just actual air horns. Yeah, like actual air horns. So like Happy <laughs> Monday. Don't. Give every live studio audience an air horn. Well, uh, we well, need to know. do that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I think they would like. Would you guys like it? Can yeah. you guys like so boo or cheer? Would you guys like air horns? Huh? Uh, yeah. I okay, mean, but you, I you can't. You can't. I told you. This is going to be bad. Every single person. Oh, I dear. think they're going to like it. There's thousands of them. It's it's g- <laughs> Everyone with, thousands. There's millions of them yeah, all with true. air horns. I love doing our episodes at the Abbotsford Entertainment Center. <laughs> it's, just, it's packed with people. All right. Um, this is his latest book, Ray Comfort. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, YouTube him, Google him. He's fantastic. An amazing guy. So many lions, so few Daniels. And the tagline, living without compromise in a world in need of truth. And honestly, that is um, that is like our main heartbeat within doubt. Our desire is to just bring truth. Mm. And we know that we see a lot of compromise, compromise, compromise happening in the church. And so we'll ask him, why are there so few Daniels? And uh, what can we do about that? But uh, fantastic book. I've been reading through it. And I love at the end of every chapter, he has these uh, uh, witness encounters where he goes around. You can see it on YouTube. He has like millions of views of all his uh, episodes where he just talks with people at colleges, asks them about God, what they think about God, and um, kind of walks through the Ten Commandments. Um, I've said this to, you know, I've, I've told them this off air, but uh, so it's not going to be funny. So you're going to have to pretend to hear this for the first time and laugh, <laughs> which my wife does all the time. I have certain jokes that I know really work. And so I say them multiple conversations with different people. And I get a first laugh from them. But just shout out to my wife if you're watching this. She's probably not. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> she doesn't watch the show, man. She doesn't watch the show. She's not, she's not a huge fan. But um, if you're watching, shout out to you. Because every time she'll hear the joke for like the thousandth, thousandth time. And she still laughs as if she heard it for the first time. Wow. What a great That's, that's, a, that's, that's, an, that's a Proverbs 32 woman. Extra chapter. <laughs> On humor. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. Andrew's adding but, stuff to the Bible. Call oh. John. Call John right now. <laughs> John on demand. John on demand. Um, no, but uh, but uh, but uh, you guys have to laugh as if you heard for the first time. But okay. Uh, okay. we use Ray Comfort's name in our home as a verb. Oh, wow. And really? so we do. Uh, so we say you've been Ray Comforted. 
<laughs> if we go through the Ten Commandments. And I've watched <laughs> Michelle do this. I'd go, you know, had a friend come over. He's like one of my like car buddies working on the car with me. We're having lunch. Michelle walks in. Boom, starts Ray comforting him and just going through the Ten Commandments, <laughs> asking if he's a good person, asking all these different things. And I just watch her. As soon as she starts doing it, I'm like, oh, boy, Ray's in the, I'm going to leave. I'm going to I'm sitting inside the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watching to see if I lose another friend. But uh, but uh, you know what? Uh, his ministry has been very impactful to my wife and I and to mm. all, literally millions of people. And um, so I think we should just uh, get right at it. Yeah, sounds Let's good. Hear what, he has to say. hear what he has to say about this book, um, his heart behind the book, and um, just ask him some questions, especially about those witnessing encounters. I'd love to just kind of pick his brain about how he feels when he's doing it and does it make him scared? You never, you wonder with some of these guys, like they just do it so often. Maybe they're just fearless or maybe they do have fear. So we're going to ask them some great questions. And um, that's it from me. Because if I keep talking, your Monday won't be great. Oh. Right? Yeah. Uh, it'll be like, you know, an average you, Monday. <laughs> you make my Monday great, Andrew. I refuse to look at you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's the nicest thing he's ever said to me, folks. I really wish you I had that You always say that every time I say something relatively good about it. <laughs> yeah. That is the nicest thing. Ever. Oh, anyways, I love you, Brendan and Chris. And uh, I do love Ray Comfort, so let's uh, dive right in. All right, well, here we are. We have Ray Comfort all the way in California. Ray, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, you know what? I told you this right before we recorded, but my wife and I are huge fans of you and your ministry. We actually use your name around the house as a verb. Um, my <laughs> wife always does street ministry and evangelizes to family. And even some of my friends, when they come over to work on the car, she'll come out and start doing the Ten Commandments. And uh, we always uh, we just say, you know, they've been Ray comforted. And uh, sometimes it's uncomfortable to be comforted, but it's important to be comforted. And so uh, this yeah. truly is an honor uh, to spend some time with you today. But uh, for those of us who are watching or listening, uh, maybe uh, you didn't hear the last time we had Ray on the episode uh, on the Indout Show, but uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you're doing in California, about your family and your ministry. I'll just get a little background as you might find a slight accent when I speak. That's <laughs> because I'm originally from New Zealand been living in the United States since 1989 in Southern California. Um, New Zealand sheep country is something like 50 million sheep and 4 million people. They're not sure of the exact amount, <laughs> but the guy that counts them keeps falling to sleep. However, <laughs> um, New Zealand is it's, uh, it's my home country, but I've been over here so long. Um, but I love I've been back, I think, 14 times. Anyway. Came to the U.S. in 1989 and set up a, a ministry. It was very quiet for about three years. I knew God wanted me here. Uh, I felt directed. When I say I felt directed, we were directed by the Lord very clearly when I was invited to come to the U.S. Um, Thirteen very strange things happened over a period of three days. Just really weird stuff. Hmm. Um, so anyway, we came to the U.S. I've been here for uh, something like 30-something 30, 30 years. And our ministry is to equip Christians to fulfill their faith, to uh, evangelize, mm. to reach out to the lost, to teach them how to do it as Jesus did it. We've got a television program called The Way of the Master. Um, Kirk Cameron, the actor, called in 19... No, it was 2001. He had heard a teaching I do called Hell's Best Kept Secret, wanted to combine ministries, so we did. That caused our whole ministry to explode. And so that's what we do. We teach Christians how to share their faith biblically. That's kind of a synopsis. Amazing. You know, our home church just announced yesterday uh, that they're doing a program at the church, and it's uh, Way of the Master. And um, so my wife signed up right away where they go through some of the teaching, and then uh, the next morning they actually go on the streets and uh, put it to practice, and she's so pumped. So oh, uh, nice. You've all got a way, wonderful wife. I have a wonderful wife. I talk about her a lot on the show. I think she should be the host, to be honest, because she's uh, incredible. Uh, but uh, I do have a wonderful wife, and she's very excited about that. But um, that's really cool that you do that, and, and your ministry has just been so impactful to many, many people literally across the world. You write as well, and um, uh, your most recent book, So Many Lions, So Few Daniels, I have a copy of it here, and I've been going through it, Living Without Compromise in a World in Need of Truth. And I mean, that is so, man, bang on in today's culture. And so walk us through your heart behind the book, 
maybe some of the problems you've seen and some of the solutions you're hoping to give readers through this book? Yeah, I was inspired by atheists. Uh, mm. About a year and a half ago, I saw a T-shirt online that said, uh, too many Christians, not enough lions. And I thought, boy, that's about as culturally sensitive as too many Jews, not enough Nazi ovens, too many blacks, not enough lynching ropes. Hmm. And so I was very angry. I thought, how can they say that about Christians? Wow. Too many Christians, not enough lions. What sort of a, a contempt and hatred they must have for us. So I wrote this book in the in the hope that Christians will be emboldened to share their faith because there are certain keys that help us hmm. overcome our fears. Uh, I know I have fear all the time, and I continually use these biblical principles that take Goliath down to Zacchaeus mm. in an instant. Mm. And when you know how to put them into practice, they really do help. Mm. Uh, I think my most um, powerful motivation for sharing my faith is gratitude. I'm so grateful that God took a wretch like me, forgave my sins, changed my heart, opened my eyes, took me out of death into life, darkness into light, saved me from the power of the grave. Mm. You know, death has lost its sting. And so I'm exploding daily with gratitude. When I first got saved, I had so much gratitude, didn't know what to do with it. And now I'm just the same or even more. And that gratitude is a prime, high-octane fuel that drives me to do the will of God. And if you don't have gratitude, if you've never seen your sins and see yourself worthy of damnation, then you'll lack that gratitude it'll be like pushing the car rather than driving it hmm. you won't have to evangelize it'll be a burden to you when it need not be if there's gratitude so that's a huge key it motivates me every day i go to local cottage twice a day on my electric bike with my dog wearing sunglasses and i witness to people and i film it we put it online and our youtube channel is something like 244 million views now Wow. And I am delighted to say that so many Christians are learning these principles. They know that they have fears. They learn how to deal with them. As I said, they can make Goliath and Zacchaeus in a second if they put them into practice. Wow, that's so huge. And and it's it's cool to hear um, that um, that Goliath can come down. Like So you mentioned you have certain fears. Do you ever have fears of going around and, and sharing and connecting with people with the camera, with what you do? Or are yeah, you... all the time. Oh, yeah, really? All the time. Really? I have like this fear, this apathy, this condemnation. There's all sorts of like, accusations all going through my head. I'm riding into a into a school, a college, on a bike, boldly thinking, "What an idiot I must look!" You know, riding through the school, stopping, got a dog with these sunglasses, and I just take no notice. Uh, hmm. Fears. You know, what say the teachers come and say you can't do this? I take no notice. My own fears, what say I don't know what to say? Well, God will help me. So the key is to take no notice of your fears. I have them all the time. You're like a firefighter who shows up at a building that's on fire. Fifth story, there's a woman and a ch two children at the window. They are almost catching on fire. It's so hot, they're screaming in terror. You have to climb a 60-foot ladder to reach out, grab those two kids, grab that woman, would you rather be at home with your wife watching an old black and white movie on television, supping hot coffee? Of course you would, but you're a firefighter. So you ignore your fears. You climb that ladder and you do what you know you should. Otherwise, you shouldn't have the name firefighter. Hmm. Sure, firefighters get terrified, but they ignore their fears. And the Bible likens you and I to firefighters. It says this, others having compassion, making a difference, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, Jude 23. So the firefighter has fears. How does he control them? He doesn't look at himself. He looks at that woman and her two children. He has compassion. Hmm. Others having compassion, making a difference, hmm. pulling them to the fire. So that's the huge key. Whenever I meet some teenager or some school college student, I'm thinking of their salvation. I'm thinking what's going to happen if they die in their sins today. That motivates me. That helps me get rid of my fears. Wow. So, so far, foundational things that we need to have in our hearts is a gratitude, firstly, to even give you the motivation and the drive and the desire to even share your faith, understanding who you are um, and what God has saved you from, and then compassion for those around. I find it's hard to have compassion sometimes when I see people so against God. And I know yeah, the Lord has to melt my heart. Of, 
by saying there, by, by the grace of God, go I. If, if you had not been a Christian and you're in the world and you've got a gorgeous girlfriend, you want to have sex with her. Everybody does, not with her, but everyone wants to have sex with their girlfriends. And you'll look at porn. It's on your phone, comes up, instant pleasure, instant gratification. Um, nobody knows. And so Christians are a, a real pain when it comes to this pleasure. We're a threat. We mm. want to outlaw what they live for. So their enmity towards us is understandable. Hmm. And we overcome it by showing them love and concern. So when I meet a, a Christian, I say a non-Christian, I know that my tone is very important. If I've got a condescending tone, it's going to uh, confirm his antagonism towards Christians. But if I show a real loving concern for him, a real gentle tone, as the scriptures say we should have, hmm. he's going to respond because human beings respond to love. It's just something they do love and concern. So I find my tone is very important. And also an urgency in the tone needs to be there. I remember years ago, I used to have a drug prevention center in the heart of our city. And one day a friend called up, at, I think he woke me at about 6.30 in the morning to tell me the building that I was in, that my drug prevention center was in, was on fire. Now, this is what he said. It was in the Regent Theater building. He said, Ray, the Regent Theater building is on fire. I didn't say, oh, yeah, big joke. I could tell by his tone hmm. that he was speaking the truth. And you and I need to have that sort of tone in our voice when we share the gospel. Wow. A gentleness, a love and concern, and a tone of urgency so they can detect that we really do care about them. Their house is on fire and we want to get them out. Oh, man, that's so good. Um, what, what are some, uh, you know, in this book, and, and I see this so much, living without compromise in a world in need of truth. And I know our world is so desperately in need of truth. And so I'm grateful for you, your ministry, and sharing truth with people all the time. Why do you feel like there are so few Daniels in our culture today? Um, I think it's because of what's pervaded in so many pulpits. You've got mm. men who are motivational speakers rather than preachers of righteousness. They are motivating people to have a more successful life. They're not sons of thunder preaching righteousness, sin, and judgment. They don't preach the fear of the Lord. And so they reproduce after their own kind. Hmm. The preacher has no concern for the lost, so those to whom he ministers imitate him and have no concern for the lost. If he is into prophecy, the whole congregation is going to be into prophecy because that's what they're fed. If he's into sanctification or worship, that's where their emphasis will be. And it's as though they've never read the book of Acts because the book of Acts doesn't have a church that's interested in prophecy or, or worship. They just had men and women who were on fire for God, knowing a world was going to hell, and they could not but speak that which they'd seen and heard. Hmm. And so I am so delighted that, I mean, back in 1992, when we first came over, came over here, the pastor that invited us to the church knelt down and prayed with me. And I remember him saying, Oh Lord, get the pastors out of the way. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bold prayer. <laughs> and it happened when Kirk Cameron joined the ministry. All the television, Christian television networks said, Oh, please come on. And Kirk has gives me gives me permission to do this. It was like jalapeno wrapped in candy. Kirk mm. Cameron, oh, a lovable actor. Um, nice, nice guy. And so we went in together and we preached sin, righteousness, and judgment right in these networks that never would have touched me like a, you know, they would have kept away from me with wow. a barge because of what I preached. But because Kirk and I were, were together, they let me in and we got asked the pastors to say, hey, we've got to reach the lost. How can you call yourself a Christian if you don't care about the lost? And I remember loving that quote by Charles Spurgeon, have you no wish for others to be saved? Then you're not saved yourself. Be sure of that. Wow. It's what I wanted to say. And I thought, if I say it, people are going to hate me. But if I quote Spurgeon, they can hate him because he said it. But if you're not, if you're not caring about the lost, how does the love of God dwell within you? Hmm. How could you let could you let a child drown in a swimming pool because you couldn't be bothered reaching out because you were too busy getting lunch? Hmm. Your priorities aren't right. And hmm. people are dying and going to hell. We have everlasting life. We have a moral obligation. And that's what we see driving the church of the book of Acts. And that's what we see 
the modern Laodicean church ignoring and doing everything but what they've been commanded to do. Ma'am, I, sometimes I wonder what it would be like if we wrote a letter to the Church of America or the Church of Canada. Because I feel like... I think it's already been done. It's yeah. already been done. It's the Laodicean church, the yeah. lukewarmness. She said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Hmm. You know, lukewarmness is not something you and I really embrace. If I give you a cup of coffee and it's lukewarm, it's got bits of bits of old sort of milk floating in the top, you're not going to want that. You're going to spew it out. It's going to make you sick. It's either got to be hot or cold, but lukewarm, no, no good for the stomach. And Jesus said that if you're lukewarm about your love for me, I'm going to spew you out of, mouth, out of my mouth. It's like being lukewarm in your love for your wife. She's not going to like that. Mm -hmm. She wants to be cold and refreshing or hot and stimulating. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should be in our walk with the Lord. That's such a good word. Such a good reminder. And, and I feel you're bang on. I just We talk about this a lot on the End Out Show, just the reality that uh, churches are just preaching anything but the gospel these days. It's just, you know, like you said, motivational speaking or have your best life or all these different things. And it just we got to get back to the heart of the gospel or else we're, we're what we win them with is what we win them to. That's and, so true. Uh, yeah. And so that's such a good word. So, uh, so then, okay, if you're not winning the lost and loving the lost and reaching the lost, are you even a believer? And that's a huge question. Um, talk about, uh, you know, at the end of each chapter, you have uh, these witnessing encounters, which I love reading the transcripts of some of the conversations you're having with people. And um, it's such a it's such a gift to kind of go through those, read through those. But uh, I've heard some people mention to me, even at church, oh, I don't know if street evangelism is effective anymore, or if we should even be doing it, or some people even come against it. Uh, how would you respond to people who are doubting that it's something we should even be doing, or if it even works? I'd say, what part of by all means don't you understand? That's what the Apostle Paul <laughs> said. Yeah. If you're in a, a lifeboat and people are drowning around you, you could throw out one rope. If you've got three ropes, you could throw out three. If you've got a net, throw the net out. If you've got an oar, use the oar to reach them by all means. So that sort of talk reveals a shallow love. Hmm. You know, by all means, seek and save that which is lost. And that's what I've done with all my heart. I saw something on YouTube recently that I think is probably most profound, encouraging, interesting, and powerful video I've ever, ever seen. Three shorts, about 30 seconds. I don't know if you've seen it. And when I talk about it, you're going to say, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> it's a rooster. And the rooster is crowing. And he goes, uh, uh, uh. And, and then he goes to his, uh, and he keeps going for 30 seconds. Just go, uh, uh, like that. It's a horrible noise. And then finally, <laughs> he gives so much, he falls backwards onto the ground. Now, I loved it. I thought, this what a dumb old bird. This is so funny. I sent it to a friend who's a successful <laughs> businessman thinking he would think it was funny. He immediately wrote back and said, that rooster gave 110%. And I thought, oh, that's not a dumb bird. That's a bird, a rooster, realizing what God created him for, and he's giving his whole heart and his soul 110%. Mm. That's how we should be as Christians. Whole heart and soul with everything we've got, reaching out to do the will of God. Loving God with heart, mind, soul, and strength, loving our neighbor as ourself, and running to do his will. Hmm. We've got an outreach coming up at the Olympics um, in 2024. It's the Paris Olympics. It's going to be huge. Uh, we just had an outreach to London for the coronation, and 21,000 workers responded, and something like 16 million gospel tracts were printed. It was so encouraging. This is going to be bigger. Wow. Uh, because everybody that's a Christian who's got a concern for the lost knows the evangelistic potential is something like the Olympics. The whole world, three billion people watch the Olympics. It's 20, I think it's 26 days or 22 days. And the whole world watches. It's not just watching a coronation of a king, you know, a number of nations, but this is the whole world. So we want to reach out to 170 countries and motivate literally hundreds of thousands of people to give out the tracks. But the reason I'm saying that is if you look at Olympian champions, they give everything they've got. In fact, one guy, um, Michael Phelps, won 23 gold medals. Almost everybody knows that, but they don't know that he was suicidal. He was so depressed, even though he'd won those medals. You win 23 gold medals. You are instantly famous. Well, he's famous. 
you've got gold, girls, and glory. As much money as you want, not just the 23 gold medals, but all the endorsements that come with it, all the girls in the world, beautiful girls flinging themselves upon you, and all the glory. And he was depressed and wanted to commit suicide. He was deadly serious. Why? Because it's all chasing the wind. Gold medals are nothing in the light of eternity. It doesn't matter who you are. The gold medals don't go with you. If you're the queen of England, you set aside your robes, you put in a box, you're buried in the ground like everyone else, and she gets buried above the ground. And so of all the people in the world that should give 110%, it should be you and I that have found everlasting life. We're broken free from the confines of futility because the world says Michael Phelps has got mental disease. I absolutely, with every ounce of energy I've got, say that's not true. People who get depressed don't have mental disease. They have a thinking mind. And when you have a thinking mind, you realize this, realize this whole world is chasing the wind. It's futile all because of death. And that's what makes people depressed. That's what makes them want to commit suicide because no matter what you attain, all the love and laughter, friends and family, it's all chasing the wind because death is going to seize you and take you away from everything you love and hold dear. As Christians, we're no longer subject to futility. We're passed from death to life. We have a message that we've got to lift up our voice like a trumpet and tell us people that God has destroyed death through the gospel and they're going to be interested if we lift up our voices as a trumpet. So what I'm trying to say is of all the things we should give 110% for, it's our concern to do the will of God and reach out to the lost. Praise God, man. Praise God. I'm so grateful for your ministry and all that you're doing. Um, I wanted to do a little takeaway for our young listeners, uh, something that they could take away. And I was debating between just, you know, speaking to the young adult who's listening, who's giving 30%. Uh, but I also thought, it would be so cool to maybe have you give an example of what you do on the street and you can, you know, I can be Ray comforted and we can go through kind of some of the questions you ask, some of the dialogue in these witness, uh, witness encounters. Well, you want to do a role play? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What do you think? You can be Ray. <laughs> yeah. I, I've done that lots with Kirk Cameron. I didn't used to like it, but he got me used to it. <laughs> That's so funny. And I can play the role of Kirk. And um, no, and you're gonna play a non-Christian. I, I'm a non-Christian, and you are Ray. And this non-Christian is gonna get Ray comforted. A lot of people will want to be a Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, okay, let's do it. Let's say you just sit at your desk, and I come up to you and say, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Good. What's your name? My name's Andrew. Andrew, I've got a question for you. Do you think there's an afterlife? Uh, I think about it sometimes, but I don't, you know, think about it a lot. I'm not I know sure. when you don't think about it, you don't think about it because you're scared of dying. It's a horrible thought, dying and leaving your loved ones, being buried in a, in a in a box under the ground. We think about it, and when we think about it, it terrifies us, so we get ourselves busy with other things. Am I right? Yeah, that, that that's very, very true. I, I am afraid of death. So what's going to happen to you when you die, Andrew? Where are you going? I don't know. Do you have a bucket list for this life? Yeah, I do. So what do you want to do in this life before you die, before you kick the bucket? Uh, I'd like to make sure I travel, see specific places that I like. You know. So you don't mind spending your life sitting in the airports? <laughs> no, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's going to happen after you kick the bucket? Where are you going? Shouldn't you find out? I think it's safe to say it's important to find out, I guess. I guess? Of all the things, look... The revelation comes to us, I don't know what age, some different, happens to different people, but from that point on, you should have been spending every ounce of your energy to find out if there's an answer to death. You should always be afraid of that which is going to kill you, and death is going to kill you. And so you should be saying, how can I get out of the way of death? Let me ask you a question. Ever read the Bible, Andrew? Uh, not that much, no. Okay, do you know a synopsis of the Bible? Let me give you one. In the Old Testament, God promised to destroy death. The New Testament tells us how he did it. Did you know that? No. Are you interested in what God has done? Yeah. Okay. Got another question for you. Andrew, you're wearing me out before I go witnessing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question for you. You're a doctor, and right in front of you, you've got a patient who thinks he's very well. 
You know he's not. You've seen x-rays that show he's got a terminal disease. He's going to be dead in two weeks. You've got a cure in your pocket. Should you give him the cure or show him the x-rays? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think I would show him the x-rays, immediately give him the cure. Yeah, never, ever, ever give him the cure when he's not convinced of the disease because he thinks he's well. If you give him a cure when he thinks he's very well, he's going to say, what are you giving me this cure for? Get it out of my face. This is ridiculous. Mm. Go take a hike. It, it means nothing to him. It's stupid. In fact, it's an insult because he knows he's well and you're saying, no, you're diseased. No, get out of my face. If the doctor's a good doctor, he will show him the x-rays. Mm. He will want to make the patient fearful. He'll want to make him sweat. Why? So he'll see the seriousness of his disease so he'll want the cure. If he doesn't see the seriousness of his disease, he won't want the cure. So he wants to make him sweat. He wants to hear him say, wow, doc, this is serious. What should I do? Now he's ready for the cure. He's going to appreciate and appropriate it. And so back to being this non-Christian Andrew, I want to give you the cure to your greatest disease, death itself. But you're not going to appreciate it or appropriate it Unless I show you the x-rays. Can I show you the x-rays? Sure. Okay, it's not going to be pleasant. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's going to make you sweat a little, but that sweat's good because it's going to want to make you the cure. And then I take him through the Ten Commandments. Have yeah. you looked with lust? Ever stolen anything? Ever lied? Ever used God's name in vain? And say, where are you going to go, heaven or hell? And mm. he, when he says hell and goes, mm, boy, I can. this is deadly serious. Mm. Then I say, now you're ready for the cure. And I share the gospel that Christ died for our sins, rose again on the third day, and he needs to repent, trust in Jesus. Now, I took a shortcut there because I'm a little exhausted, and I <laughs> want to say by energy because I'm going to the local college twice today. Wow. And I want to have energy. Amazing. No, I appreciate that so much. I've been very comforted. And I hope for our video, <laughs> uh, video viewers, our audio listeners, um, that's just a great example of just asking simple questions, getting to know someone, uh, think of the tone, like you mentioned. Um, it sounds like you are serious. You believe what you are saying. And um, you just graciously walk through the Ten Commandments. And then they find out that they're lustful, lying, cheating, stealing, you know, like all of us are, for all have sinned and fallen short. And uh, then you give them that that cure, the good news. And you can't understand the good news, like you said, unless you actually know the bad news, because the good news isn't good unless you know the bad. So, Thank you. That's such a great example. And uh, I appreciate your book. I appreciate your ministry. I appreciate your time, all that you're doing. And um, we're praying for you even today as you go to the colleges that the Lord will bless you, use you and your dog with sunglasses and uh, that uh, people will be saved today. Today is the day of salvation in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thanks for having me on, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Yeah. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, wow, that was a fan. I guys, I just got Ray comforted. You did. <laughs> you just got totally Ray comforted. Got comforted. I am so blessed. I think I just gave my life to the Lord for the first time. Just kidding. I'm a Christian. I promise. There it is. He used the joke but, again. Uh, and we're supposed okay. to pretend we heard it for the first time. Well, the second time. Wow. Third time <laughs> actually. Oh, third time's a charm. Every time they didn't laugh actually, just so kidding. that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <But, laughs> you laughed the first time. <laughs> you didn't laugh the first time. Didn't laugh the second time. They're laughing at the fact that they didn't laugh the third time. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That's Anyways, funny. Uh, Ray comfort what did you guys think that was like fantastic so yeah. many takeaways for me i think the big takeaway for me was the fact that uh he admitted that sometimes he's still afraid mm. like yeah that's kind of huge that was so overwhelming for me because you see all these videos and millions of views and he does it all the time this twice a day expert. you figure he nope. does it twice a day yeah that he it's just normal and natural for him yeah. yeah and there's this confidence but it's like no i mm. wonder if i'm looking stupid pulling up to this yeah. school i'm like wow i can't believe ray comfort Hmm. feels how many years has he been doing it again 30 well, that's like a long time he came here in 1989 i think yeah i, I, said. Cities, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine and it was early 90s years. Yeah. yeah yeah so about 30 years wow yeah which is just like wow and it's still like he gets that feeling mm. of oh, i wonder if i look silly or what if i don't have the words to say what have got i'm like yeah wow mm -hmm. that just blew my mind it was just encouraging to me that it not let fear stop us yep. mm -hmm. uh see how he gave the analogy of the fireman like fear is not stopping him you have to push your fear aside and you got to do it. Mm -hmm. And he also said he's 74 years old. He's in a croak soon. So he's going to just go on mission every day as much as <laughs> I like he can. that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, a good motivation. It's right? a good motivation. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We're going to die. 
we're going to die. Eventually, yep, we're all going to die. Probably. So probably. <laughs> this guy is, <laughs> wow. This guy's got weird theology, yeah? <laughs> Well, he's uh, on to the transhumanism well, thing. Live he's, forever, to, so. like, he's, he's waiting for his Neuralink uh, brain chip to last forever. No, he was with Christ. You live oh, forever. Come that's on. That's true. To he die is gain eternal actually, life. Technology. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank uh, you. What were some big takeaways for you guys or what, what do you... Uh, well, it wasn't necessarily a takeaway from the interview, but, but, but uh, a random thought I had was like, oh man, I use the church as my evangelism tool way too much that's mm. like my buffer oh come to church mm. check this out and then yeah. i'll evangel or i'll let the pastor ev the evangelize for me or ah. i'll let the situation or like the love of the church or like look how awesome this is like and like that's not the gospel that's great but that's not the gospel and i'm like hoping that the sunday morning message is like a good message that's applicable yeah. to my lost friend it's like that's not and then they talk about tithing you're like oh <laughs> Dang Are it. you it's, kidding me, man? It's funny you say that, though, because I've heard Dr. John talk about situations like that where it's like you think that the message is completely true, like true, 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 unevangelistic or whatever. And then it ends up and saving then them. Yeah. A person comes. Sorry, like, not saving I them. I totally but needed to hear that. Yeah. And that was totally. And honestly, all like, jokes aside, like I've had mm -hmm. friends get saved in sermons. Yeah, uh, we're on tithing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so, like, or missions know. weekend or, yeah. you know, you know, so it's obviously yeah, the spirit works. Yeah. Yeah, he's working, works, he's so. working. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know, and if it's the word of God, it's it's uh, going to be life for people. Mm -hmm. True, but, um, true. But that's a really good point, though, because, yeah. you know, oftentimes... It's not a bad uh, thing, It's not it's a like, bad can't thing. be the only thing. It's not yeah. the only thing, because even if you think of the Great Commission, it's not yeah. come and see, yeah. it's go and tell. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so there's an aspect of us actually going out to the world mm -hmm. and telling. And I remember we talked with Ray about the idea of, like, what do you tell people when they say, oh, evangelism, like, going onto the streets, it doesn't actually really work. And he's like, well, I guess they don't even have an idea what the Bible says mm. then because the Bible yep. does tell us to go and tell. Wasn't there a back to the Bible campaign that was like, come and see or something? <laughs> and you're like, it's not. Do you remember that? Go and tell? Go and, no, go it, was, tell. it was come show and, and see. Tell. Show and tell? And see. No. <laughs> yeah. I just Today I'm bringing that. my Bible. It was no. like years ago, an old uh, back to the Bible yeah. like I think he was thing. part of it. I think you were. Yeah, you were part of it. I was a part of it. Come and you see. were a part of it. We weren't even around. I wasn't around no, yet. No, the I will tell to her. I will tell. That's oh, I will tell. It's both. Because yes. I remember Sam, do you remember Sam? He did like this yeah. voiceover, come and see. He did did he that. say come and see? Yeah. I remember Sam actually. Yeah, good guy. Yeah. So, sorry, so I, I just remember <laughs> Shout that. out Sam if you're watching. Sam Ferreira. We, we missed you, bro. Um, but, uh, Roche. There is a... <laughs> Ferreira Roche. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages from... Ferreira Roche. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's common sense. Sorry, folks. I tend to sidetrack the show a lot. Just, he does. I'll just that's shut okay. Up. That's okay. No, don't shut up, but just stop. Um, okay. Just kidding. Um, but um, that's very fascinating that it's a, okay. Brendan just canceled himself again. <laughs> he's getting really, he's getting really fa fast at uh, self-canceling. That's right. Um, Speedy guns out. But uh, it's important for us to go and tell as well. Mm -hmm. And yep. it's biblical for us to go and tell. And it's, it's the gospel for us to go and tell. Even if we think of a few weeks back, maybe longer than a few weeks, it was April, I believe, with Matt Smethurst uh, talking about how to share your faith. And, you know, yep. um, it's it's important. It's a part of the Christian walk. We can't just say come to church. We need to actually engage with people. Um, did we ask you what your thoughts were, your big takeaway? I mean, I think we've mostly covered some mostly of the covered. I mean, I like the... I think with the whole why are there so few Daniels and the mm. the bad preaching, I think we were bad preaching, yeah. Yeah, I think that was really huge. That's why there are a few Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> because it, that's it, yeah. It, it's crazy how <laughs> it's crazy how it all stems to, you know, the compromise from the pulpit. Mm. There's a lot of compromising mm. happening at the pulpit, which means we're not raising up yep. Daniels mm. to stand for truth. You know, I'm gonna name my kid Daniel. Just gonna <laughs> Just kidding. Shout, shout out. Actually, it's a good name. It's a good shout name. out, Brandon's name. future son. Biblical name. You're watching. Daniel's a great name, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it all stems back to the pulpit, which I thought was very important, which I think might be a great way for us to maybe transition into... Whoa, looks like it's time for d d Dangerous Doctrines. D d d dangerous Doctrines. Okay. okay. You heard it, folks. Very We're cool. Some dangerous I haven't doctrines. heard that jingle in a while. Yeah. It's been a while, actually. And this oh, is very I mean, important. I think it's important for us to kind of walk through some of the stuff that's being uh, preached from the pulpit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> speaking of preached. compromise, speaking of compromise, listen to this quote. Um, this is a quote from a very well-known pastor. And um, the title is, Jesus can't do all things. Uh, what? Yes. 
Well, Jesus can't sin, so. Uh, so I guess he can't <laughs> do that. Okay, here's the quote. You ready for this? Oh, yeah. The power of God was in Jesus, the healing power of God, the restoring power of God, the same power that made demons flee was in Nazareth, but Jesus could not release it because it was trapped in their unbelief. That's even one thing Jesus can't do. One thing that even the Son of God can't do, even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. I don't know if, well, I guess it depends on your view of salvation, but uh, you mean it, the right way or the wrong way? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm not going to say what. Well, if you listen to any of John Newfeld's messages, you know what he believes. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I think I don't think the word "can't" is the right word uh, because if you, it's definitely, it's it's definitely not the right word. Yeah, yeah. If, if you believe in the elect, but no, but like Ar Arminians would say, yeah, he can't override your free will. Or maybe not he can't, but he refuses to. Yeah, but right? You can't say he can't. Yeah. that's right. Well, I yeah. don't know, because it's a self-imposed limitation, would it not be? Like, if you were to ask God, can you save my friend? I cannot do that. It is, it is not in my will. That's what a Calvinist would believe. That's what a Calvinist would believe. And then an Arminian would say, no, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, oh, so, oh, so now I'm, we're going down into like the whole like limited atonement Oh boy. yeah, yeah, Debate basically, sort of yeah, thing. tulip, yeah. Um, so this is actually, <laughs> but I but mean, I don't know if I would use the word can't. I definitely wouldn't use yeah. the word can't. I would not use yeah. the word can't. Yeah, but so then, it's not that he can't. But then just, after that, yeah, after that, that quote, <laughs> he looks around because the room is kind of quiet. Usually, this guy's getting lots of cheers, mm. and he's like, "You guys are looking at me like, is that right? Is that right?" <laughs> so he's just he doesn't even know what he believes. And then he I says, don't. "It says that he could not." is what the scripture said when it talks about that specific passage, but it's not what, like he's taking it fully out of context. Hmm. Um, and that's where he gets the word can't, like he cannot override their unbelief. That'd be a good one to ask. I think uh, Arminians would believe that. I could be wrong. I just don't see that in the Bible anywhere. That no. I don't see that in the Bible anywhere. And in fact, even when you think of like election and predestination, all this stuff, Paul like specifically talks about it over and over again. Yeah. It's not like we need to try to find it. Yep. It's yep. like he literally just says straight up. My wife and I were just talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um, so I think the only way we can be saved is if God gives us new life and a new nature, mm -hmm. which overcomes our sin nature and our unbelief. Mm -hmm. Like he has to, yeah. you know, yeah. John 3, 3, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so. Because I mean, that also is putting it into a bit of a works-based theology as well, mm -hmm. saying that it's, I believe, there's my decision to believe mm -hmm. in yeah. God. That's me doing it. Yeah. Hmm. Which, Which, again, it has to be mm -hmm. it's the grace the, of God working yeah. through you. Yeah. It's it's the whole debate of, of whether where the, <clears throat> the sovereignty of God ends and where the free will of man begins. And so the reform position would be the sovereignty of God goes a lot further. Yes. Um, yeah. And then the yeah. Armenian position would be, it's more of like a, uh, I don't know, for better for lack of a better term, like a joint effort, like it's both parties need to. So I believe like John Newfeld's position would be um, like, we don't choose salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I wouldn't say that it's not a valid position to hold. Like I, I don't think Arminians are like not Christian or anything like that. Like yeah, I disagree yeah. with them, but they're, it, it's it is a valid position to hold like yeah and i feel like i mean even if you uh i wouldn't say that quote is valid no, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't think the yeah. word can't is the, yeah i think that's i would never right bash word. anybody for being for believing you know being arminian or, or calvinist or, or having that approach that yeah, theological that's not, yeah that's for not sure the issue. and i feel like honestly like you look at both sides and there's things on both sides you're like yeah you know the bible says that yeah the bible kind of says that too it's like we're trying in our finite minds mm -hmm. to understand something that just we just probably you know, can't yeah, fully understand. But there's a lot of scripture that point to the sovereignty and mm -hmm. how, um, you know, something we can really do to be saved. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a really interesting quote. I, I heard that and I was like, wow, like sometimes I kind of do some digging and like, what's the latest, uh, mm -hmm. you know, heresy? And <laughs> the uh, response after was it. interesting. Like, oh, wait, you guys looking at me like that? Yeah, it's like, what you got? Did what, I say something wrong? Right? Yeah. It's like he, he has no like sense of like conviction, like this is truth. This is what I believe. And it's like, it says that he could not 
And then like four people cheer. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, I'm glad it's not like an eruption of like 15,000 people cheering. Yeah, so that's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting when the when the congregation has to hold the, the pastor accountable. It's like, no, that's not. That's I don't think right. that's right. I don't think that's right, that's sir. That's really funny. Yeah. Um, this next quote, um, I don't even know where to begin with it, but uh, we're going to go for it. Uh, she starts off by saying, hey, I know this is going to offend some people, but I don't care. <laughs> all right and so that's the beginning right. <laughs> that's the that's her uh preface here and then this is what it says i view the holy spirit like the genie from aladdin he's blue <laughs> <laughs> he's funny he's sneaky he's silly and he's <laughs> courageous and he's everywhere and he's wonderful he's the helper he's there he's always supportive and he's comforting and he's so fun you got three wishes what do you want <laughs> Wow. Oh, man. You lost me at blue. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's crazy. I think the blue was a joke. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he's sneaky. I don't see blue in scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? I don't see his color. Okay. Uh, he is the comforter. So, yeah. you know, I mean, she has well, that. Maybe they share, yeah, some He's, sub- he's comforting. She said, think, she, she said he's comforting. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, so, but, okay. Or the comforter. Yeah, okay, sure. But here's, I think... Sneaky. Problem with sneaky little with guy. that sort of thing, <laughs> and it's Ginny of the land. <laughs> the thing is, is that I think that sort of theology <laughs> tries to put the Holy Spirit oh, oh in gosh. a lamp yeah. in a box that you can just pull out whenever yeah. you want and use it for whatever Make your you three want wishes. to. Right? Yeah. Like it's. It's not about that. Yeah, it's like you're using the holy, like you're telling the Holy Spirit what you yeah. want. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. she meant the character of the genie in Aladdin versus like the idea of a genie. I think that's what, like, yeah, but then it's like, saying, maybe, which is yeah. kind of weird. Like, but then but, Robin Williams or yeah, Will Smith? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which well, one? Robin Williams. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, I, think, well, yeah. I mean, come on, yeah. Will Smith. Come on. Yeah, Will Smith, bro. Are you kidding me? Come on. But even that's it's weird to. Uh, to say that oh this person is like the Holy Spirit, that's just weird. Yeah, I don't think. And we I should wonder. Do that. If, <laughs> well, like, it, no, nobody is like God. It was, yeah, it belittles the Holy yeah, Spirit. It brings it down to, to a blue genie. To a blue yeah, genie. so like even the voice worse of than, Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting. Yeah, the 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 the, the sneaky. I guess you could kind of make like the spirit works in mysterious ways. It's just a weird oh, way of okay. characterizing. Is that what she means by sneaky? I don't know. That's he what I mean. It's, like, I'm not sure. it's hard to characterize that. It's like, and then he, what, what were the other words? Like, I felt funny. Like she, funny. funny. It's okay. Phil uh, Calloway might say that. <laughs> he's laughing. silly. Yeah, he's silly. He's, he's courageous. Silly. He's a silly little goober. He's he, a goofy like goober. That's what he is. <laughs> is he like, well, you know what they say? You ain't never had a friend like me. You're a friend. Okay. Is he a friend? <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Is this a dangerous doctrine? <laughs> well, it, it certainly can be. I think so. I think the way that yeah. you think about it. If this if, is if how that's you the way char- you're thinking about, yeah. If this is your first go-to thought when you characterize the Holy Spirit, I was like, yeah, that's yeah. probably a dangerous doctrine. It seems like it would be a little. Yeah, yeah it's like. That's specifically weird. if she's serious <laughs> about a being weird blue. doctrine. <laughs> Especially if she yeah. actually thinks he's blue. Yeah. He's I think that's blue. Pro- it <laughs> yeah. says it right here in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in uh, Second Opinions. <laughs> second Opinions. <laughs> Now here's now here's another interesting thought with that, and I might just be setting up a sound, but I might not be. Oh boy. You never know. <laughs> another but one. with the way that these guys oh, work, no. particularly I know what church this is from. What do you I think? I can't of? bring any people back from the dead. <laughs> oh, it's not a pretty okay. picture. I don't like it. Like. I mean, maybe Dude, that's, that's a whole so other funny. can of worms to to go into. It definitely because, is. Um, um, do we talk about this? Are we allowed to talk about their... Let's start. Let's stick with the quote. <laughs> yeah, because they, there's some also some pretty... There, there was with this church where yes. they tried to do that. Yeah. And again, but and that's where it goes back to like, you have to... It's God's will. You can't... They're trying to tell God or the Holy Spirit... They were twisting his arm. What to do. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, you're trying mm-hmm. to twist his arm, right? Mm-hmm. Which makes sense now if you think about the theology of maybe how they view the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah, because if he's there's fun, a, he's a helper, he's a yeah. silly little and like, yeah. if, he's if, sneaky, he's blue, <laughs> he's blue. Yeah, oh, I just love that color. Let me tell like you, it's it's a very small view of him. If you think that you can yeah. twist his arm to do your wishes, what you want. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Then it makes sense years later to see is this you know raising from the dead or different things. And I'm not opposed to the fact that that the Lord can do that. He can. Absolutely. He has. Yeah. And if he's the same yesterday, today, forever, I believe that he could. Yeah. But um, I think maybe. I don't know. That's a hard one. Is this like, why they're always giggling on stage at that specific church that we won't name <laughs> when they're doing worship? Maybe the Holy Spirit's tickling them because he's silly. Oh, he's silly. Yeah. Dude. We yeah. need to. Do we need to stop? Are we gonna get? All right. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Is there no, another quote? Honestly, was, this is all real. This yeah, is like yeah, a real thing. Yeah. And I think like when we 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 say this is a dangerous doctrine because look what else stems from it. Mm. It's not like laughing specifically on stage. Just that. Exactly. Yeah. It's it, it, laughing. I'm not opposed to laughing. I love laughing. I think the church needs to laugh more. Yeah, amen. And um, but uh, there's just the uncontrollable. You ha, know, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, yeah. remember? Didn't we do a quote we once did for that with John? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, ha 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 ha. Seriously though, talk about like this gift of laughter or mm-hmm. this. You know, the Holy Spirit's tickling me because I think I've actually heard people say the Holy Spirit's tickling me. I, I think I've heard that. I've heard that. Something it's not even, stop, stop it. it. You silly it's goober. It's like, um, that's a demon. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Um, but I think we need to be really careful with how we, we need to get a perspective of who God is, who Jesus is, mm-hmm. who the Holy Spirit is through his word, not Disney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's yeah. fair to say that. Yeah. yeah. Or anything from around us. We need to get, yeah. like, we need to be rooted in the word or else yeah. we're going to just be, uh, have a faulty idea. Mm. And then that kind of branches into other theological mm. things that we didn't even realize maybe it was founded on mm. our theology. So maybe let's ask that, Andrew, like when you, if you were to characterize like the Holy Spirit, like what are the, f- maybe the first few things that come to your mind? Because when I think of the Holy Spirit, I do think of helper, but yes. I think of like specific, like conviction. conviction. I think of sanctification. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. of like... So like would it maybe Yeah, I think I think a helper for sure. I do think comforter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and that probably comforter was like would be the first one that comes to my head. Mm-hmm. And we see scripture for comforter and yep. for helper, you know, the word paraclete mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. in John. And so we see help, we see comfort, and we see the Bible say that the Holy Spirit convicts. Mm-hmm. So technically all the ones you just said are all rooted deeply in scripture. Yep. Yeah. And teach us who he is in our lives. Yeah. And so Conviction wasn't one of the one of her list, was it? No, no. Victor. Courageous, she said. Mm-hmm. Always yeah. supportive. That one was a little. Always supportive. That one was a little tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Because what is he supporting? Yeah, just whatever I Always support- want him to. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's it's just interesting that that was how she described the Holy Spirit. It's like that's yeah. Your- yeah. Yeah. How do you describe? Comment below. Yeah. We want to hear from you. What words come to your mind or what Disney character? <laughs> just kidding. Oh, no. Tickling. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what Disney character? What uh, Disney character are you? That's funny. Uh, Prince Ali had to go. <laughs> oh, stop. All I, right. I actually. All right. All, all right. right. <laughs> um, hey, so, so I think when we think of dangerous doctrines, when we think of just having theologies based not on the word, but in other things that we don't even think about, um, like this blue. stems back to Ray Comfort mentioning you know, there's few Daniels because the pulpit is just preaching things that are anything but scripture. Mm -hmm. And that gets really dangerous. And that makes us compromise more and more and more. And we let go of truth and compromise the truths that are being preached that are not the truth. Mm. And so um, we got to be careful. We got to be really, really careful now more than ever. We really need to be careful and to be rooted in God's word and uh, use that as our foundation for for everything that we we see. And so... um, that was a good time. We didn't get to share any evangelism stories. Oh yeah, I know, we I know that, Chris. We? we I know yeah. Chris. We were thinking because you know Ray Comfort goes twice a day. Yeah, it's quite amazing to nuts. different colleges. Um, yeah. that's amazing to me, and and it's very convicting because sometimes we ask the question, okay, when's the last time we mm-hmm. evangelized? Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Um, oh, I invited my friend to church. <laughs> okay, so I'll ask <laughs> yeah. the question again. When's the last yeah. time? You <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, like it, that's the part of it. Like, have we done that? And I used yeah. to do that a lot. Um, but I know you mentioned you did that with your youth group when you were younger. Yeah, like that sort of style. Yeah, going to the mall uh, or something. Yeah. And I just, can't say I've done it. Yeah, in many years. Yeah, unfortunately. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah I really look up to him for doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah we same. used to go out as a youth group in groups to the, the big mall in our area and mm-hmm. yeah. try to do it. Yeah. With limited success, I feel. <laughs> Max. Yeah. We're sending a bunch of kids. Out. Like yeah. They don't even know yeah. What, yeah. Yeah, I, I just feel like, what I'm, and I know you mentioned some stuff too, but I feel like, you know, 
we do need to be doing it more. Yeah. And it's it is uncomfortable. And even Ray Comfort is afraid sometimes mm-hmm. of what to say yeah, or how to say it. Um, you know, um I have so many stories. We used to go every Friday when I was at university. Every Friday we'd go to the downtown east side and we would uh bring like socks and bananas and Bibles and just like bring food and just kind of sit with people. And you know, that's an area where most people kind of lock their doors and try to drive through as fast as they can. But we thought, let's actually pull over, park, and actually sit with them. What if their love language is quality time? And everyone is just literally ignoring them. And so we went every Friday, like consistently, and um, we saw some of the craziest things, but we would just be on mission. And what I found is that when we just loved people and provided stuff for people, they would always bring the conversation up of God. Mm. Uh, It was Mm. never us that really had to even bring it up because they sensed the presence of God. If Mm. God is love, they are sensing God. And so Mm. we would just love, we would sit with them, we'd give them food, offer if we could pray for them, and, and it just would naturally come up. But there are times where we would preach the gospel and a person would say, F, you get away from me. And we wow. would just leave. Awesome. And it's like, <laughs> but you know what though? It's like, okay, that, it's like, it's not. And I remember Matt Smethers when he said in the interview a few months back, um, we're just the messenger. Mm-hmm. All we have to do is deliver the mail. We don't tamper with it. We don't open it. We don't change the message. We just literally deliver the mail. And if people don't like the message, it's not on us. Mm-hmm. And so that was really comforting. And so there's times where people yell at us, swear at us, you know, tell us to get lost. And we do. And then there's times where people are very open to it. Mm-hmm. And so um, I can't count how many stories with us praying with people, leading people to the Lord or praying for healing and watching people get healed, like literally on the spot mm-hmm. or like just the craziest things uh, on the downtown east side. There's one time we're walking and we decided to go undercover and we said, we're just going to pray. And so we just prayed in our heads. But there's a guy who yells across the street, hey, you guys are Christians. And we're literally not wearing anything. Cra- we're just walking in a group. Mm. And I kind of stopped him and I yelled across the street. I'm like, how do you know? He's like, there's this weird light around you. (laughs) Whoa. You're probably just uh, laughing, having a good time. And and, he saw that. Honestly, I don't know what it was. Maybe he did see this thing. And I mean, the downtown (laughs) east east side is a very dark place. True, true, true. And so I feel like when light comes, it's probably pretty clear Mm. that Mm. this is different than what we're used to in this four block radius. So, yeah. but uh, I encourage you to be bold and to share your faith. Um, you know, my wife just the other day went to go see a family member who's uh, in palliative care and is not doing well. And um, this is an interesting story, actually. Um, she uh, specifically, I guess I can say this. She specifically said, you know, if anyone comes to visit me, that's fine, but not my wife. Mm. Because a couple of years before, my wife shared her faith with her. And felt like um, she was really offended by our faith mm. and said, like, stop trying to shove your God down my throat, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's like uh, the whole lunch kind of exploded. It got mm. awkward and it ended. And so years later, she remembers that and said, anyone can come visit me, but just not not her. Mm. And so we're at church the other day and she just looked at me and she's like, I need to go visit her. Like, I just have to. Nice. She's in palliative care. Yeah, of course. It's now end of life. And like, I just need to. Yeah. So she doesn't even know what room she's in or whatever. She's just like, I'm going to just drive to the place and God's going to just direct me to her room. So she goes, she's wandering around. She finally finds God leaves her and she wasn't upset to see her, uh, which was a surprise. Mm. And they talked for a long time and she brought up right away, oh, you tried to shove religion down my throat. And she said, no, like, you know, let me explain the situation. Explained all that she meant by that. She's like, if I had a treasure, if I had something so beautiful, Mm -hmm. it would be so wrong of me to hold it and keep it for myself. And not to share the truth with people I love. Yep. And I love you. And so she, it's crazy because the incident that happened three years before where there was the big kerfuffle, it was because of that moment that she was able to sit and actually share the entire gospel mm. with this person mm. because of what happened. Like, no, let me tell you why I was saying that. Mm. And then had this full, and she listened and she asked if she can pray. And uh, she said, Sure, do whatever you want to do. You can pray for me, which was also mind blowing, and got to pray. And um, some of the fun ways that I try to bring the gospel into conversation is through my prayers. And I encourage you with this: we go down the Roman road. So Romans three twenty three: for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans six twenty three: the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Romans eight one: therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then Romans ten nine and ten: if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And so we take them down this road and 
Um, I like to kind of go down that road in my prayer because they're never going to interrupt a prayer. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. if I say it, if I'm talking, I'll be like, yeah. hey, can I pray for you? Sure, I'd love you to pray for me. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and then just kind of pray the story of salvation so that they at least are hearing it and then maybe ask them for an opportunity. Would you like to you know, accept the Lord into your life? And so um, I encourage you um, to meditate on Scripture, maybe learn some of those passages in Romans, and um, be bold. Be bold with your faith. People need the truth, and they're getting uh, anything but the truth from everywhere they look. Mm. And so it's up to us to be salt and light, and we do it together. And I need to stop talking because this is probably going for a long time. And I feel like, uh, what time is here? Oh, dear Lord. All right. So happy Monday. <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you next week. You've been all a fabulous audience. Tell you what, you're the best audience of the whole world. Take care of yourselves. Good night, Alice. Good night, Agrabah. Adios, amigos. <laughs> see you next Monday. 